goodness, we're in the home stretch of the semester. Uh, so this section, part five, why do men love big breasts? I said it was facetious and rhetorical. Let's go. Uh, here we have Jessica Rabbit. Uh, and something interesting about Jessica Rabbit, she can exist, cannot exist in real life. Uh, that narrow waist, uh, the big hips, the huge breasts, uh, physically she would not be able to uh, physically exist. Why then is she a cartoon character? And why do men find a cartoon character sexy? Uh, well, uh, the evolutionary psychologist or the uh, eti etiologist, that is, biologists who study animal, animal behavior, would explain this via supernormal stimuli, the idea of supernormal stimuli. A supernormal stimuli is a sign stimulus which has a greater ability at eliciting, eliciting a FAP than a natural sign stimulus. It is a sign stimulus, a stimulus that is even better at causing the fixed action pattern than what really does. And let's take a look at an example of that from animal behavior or etiology. etiology. Uh, so uh, in some birds, I think this is seagulls, uh, the seagull chip, 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 chi, uh, yeah, part five, uh, uh, chick here is tapping on the mother's beak to have the mother feed it. And, uh, you know, not only does the uh, chick tap the mother's beak, but taps this red dot right here. And that's the best way to get the mother to feed the ch uh, chick. And so what uh, experimental uh, biologists do is they present chicks with different models. And so they have a natural model here with just the red dot. And then they record over a certain period of time the number of pecs. And then they change the model. And as you can see here, having the entire beak red leads to even greater, but not that much, number of pecs. Having a red dot, but uh, still a dot, causes a lower number of pecs, but not that much. No dot, but just a beak, a small number of pecs. And a red crayon, an even larger number. And we call this and this super normal stimuli because this is the normal stimuli right here. And these are more of it. That is more of the red beak and more of the red. And so this is the actual component of the stimuli that causes the fixed action pattern. And we've learned that the more of that you have, the more of the fixed action pattern you can elicit. And so now we go back to the question, uh, why uh, do uh, men find Jessica, uh, you know, rabbit attractive? Uh, and the answer is supernormal stimuli. She has the typical stimuli that men are looking for. Uh, the wide hips, uh, and probably this is not at 0 .70, uh, but, uh, you know, I like... I wonder if anybody has actually looked at that. Maybe I should, although I don't know if you could actually measure the waist to hip ratio of a cartoon character. You could try, I guess. Uh, the breasts that are pushed up uh, to indicate youthfulness. Uh, so she has a lot of these stimuli, and these are super normal stimuli. And in fact, uh, evolutionary biologists uh, and anthropologists talk about uh, heterogeneous summation, which are uh, images which have many supernormal stimuli. And this is the Venus of Willendorf. It's one of the first uh, artistic renderings that human beings ever made, and it's of a supernormal stimuli of a, a female. And you notice that it has 
uh, large uh, hips, large breasts, uh, very rounder, and what they're doing is adding, what the artist did was create an unrealistic image of a woman uh, with, especially from like 35,000 years ago, where people couldn't find enough to food to uh, actually live, uh, you know, a image of a woman that really can exist or didn't exist then, uh, you know, by putting together, uh, you know, larger and larger, uh, you know, uh, sign stimuli. And so this really is the answer or in a way an answer to the question, why do men like large breasts? Why do they like looking at large breasts? Why do they like paying women to get breast implants? Uh, why do they go to strip clubs to look at women with large breasts? And uh, because it's a super normal stimulus. And I'm being facetious about this and rhetorical at the same time, I think, because some people say, well, if this is true, the idea of supernormal stimuli is true, and what everything you're saying about evolutionary psychology is true, then men are programmed to be attracted to large breasts, and so we should really understand that men are going to be focused on breasts and are going to stare at breasts and are going to, you know, make breasts a big thing in inappropriate situations. And that is indeed one conclusion you can make from what I've been saying. Uh, but I need to remind you of the naturalistic fallacy. The na naturalistic fallacy, I've given you several different uh, similar explanations but today I'll say it's when you, can, when you confuse explanations with justifications. That is, you can explain or describe uh, men's uh, sexual attraction uh, by talking about supernormal stimuli and larger breasts. But is that really justifying or morally absolving men for focusing on breasts and bringing breasts into the equation in situations that may they may be inappropriate? And the answer is no. Uh, that is, the naturalistic fallacy is a fallacy, and equating explanations with justifications, equating is with morally right, is a fallacy. And so just because uh, men are you know, attracted more to larger breasts doesn't mean that it's okay for them to be attracted to them in any situation, even in situations where it's appropriate. And uh, that's the philosophical viewpoint. The psychological viewpoint to support this is the evolution of consciousness. That is, why would consciousness evolve uh, if evolutionary psychology is correct? consciousness had to evolve. Why? And the best theory, and it's just a theory, that we have so far is this. The explicit conscious system, you know, that's what we've been talking about all semester long, that system evolved over the last 10,000 years, 100,000 years, we don't really know, but that's a good timeline for it, to allow us to choose between two strong but conflicting motives. That is, consciousness evolved for us to choose between two strong but conflicting motives. And by motives, I'm talking about implicit implicit uh, motives or implicit motivations, uh, such as the implicit motivation to look at breasts or to focus on breasts and the implicit motiv uh, motivation to act appropriately in a business meeting or a classroom. And so you could say that men have conflicting motivations in certain situations. That is, they are motivated to be attracted to breasts and to look at breasts, but then they're also motivated to act appropriately in business situations or the classroom situation. And so, what do men do? They have these two motives. What do they do? Well, we 
evolve the idea or we evolve consciousness not just to, you know for this situation but for all situations where we have conflicting motives usually those motives are coming from uh, you know implicit processes or from the environment but we have conflicting motives we have to decide between them so we evolve consciousness to be able to work out what happens if we choose one or the other and then we can then seeing the results of what we imagine we can choose the one that we want for ourselves and so uh, it comes down to the fact that it doesn't really matter what evolution has programmed us to do uh, we always have because we do have choice we always have the choice of affirming one or the other of the motives that we're feeling and we're affirming it based on what we know will happen or what we think will positively possibly happen and we're saying I'm making the choice between these two possible goals or outcomes and I'm consciously choosing this outcome and so yes indeed uh, men who inappropriately bring up sex or uh, breasts or whatever in inappropriate places like the classroom or the office place uh, they are not victims of their unconscious implicit motives that nature has given us or evolution has given us but they still have the ability and always have the ability to choose between two options consciously and the choice is being made knowing probably what the outcomes will be and they are affirming which set of outcomes they want to head towards so the end conclusion of this is that men get to choose consciously what they do all humans get to choose consciously what they do uh, even though there are implicit motives that are strongly forcing you or motivating you to do something you can affirm the opposite because we have uh, human consciousness and consciousness evolved uh, to allow us to uh, choose between two conflicting motives and so oh we're towards the end I'll see you at the final section